Hi friends, in this video, we will go through thyroid hormone biosynthesis. We begin first with a look at the structure of the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is a butterfly shaped organ located at front of the trachea just below the Adam's apple. In the thyroid gland, if we make a cut section, we will observe that there are multiple small follicles also called thyroid follicles. Each follicle is composed of a single layer of epithelial cells which surrounds a fluid substance called colloid. These follicular epithelial cells produce a glycoprotein called thyroglobulin which they keep on secreting into the lumen. This is stored in the colloid. These thyroglobulin molecules contain the amino acid tyrosine residues and generate the thyroid hormones. In between the thyroid follicles in the connective tissue, there are scattered parafollicular C cells these cells produce the hormone called calcitonin. Calcitonin is not a thyroid hormone and is involved in calcium and phosphate regulation. As we know that thyroid has a rich vascular supply, so there are multiple blood vessels in between the thyroid follicles. There are two types of thyroid hormones produced by the thyroid gland. Number one, thyroxine, also called tetraiodothyronine or T4. They contain 4 iodine molecules and second triiodothyronine also called T3 they contain 3 iodine molecules. Thyroid gland normally secretes about 90% of T4 and about 10% of T3. Now please note that T4 is the major hormone released from the gland but T3 is a much more active form of the hormone. Before the synthesis we will have a quick look at the regulation of thyroid hormone synthesis. So the thyroid hormone T3 and T4 production is stimulated by a hormone called TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone or thyrotropin which is released from the anterior pituitary in the brain. TSH synthesis and release in turn is stimulated by TRH or thyrotropin releasing hormone which is released from the hypothalamus in the brain. Now let us look at the cross section of a single follicular epithelial cell and let us see what's going on inside. So here is the follicular epithelial cell. On the left side is the blood vessel and on the right side is the lumen containing the colloid. The cell membrane towards the blood vessel is called basolateral membrane and the membrane towards the colloid is called the apical membrane. In the blood, we have circulating iodide ions the follicular epithelial cells picks up or traps these iodide ions. Why do they do so? Because the TSH stimulates the thyroid gland to make more of thyroid hormones. Now how do the epithelial cells take up these iodide ions? They do so by a protein called NIS or sodium iodide symporter. The iodide therefore moves in and this process is called iodide trapping or iodide uptake. Next, these ions move in, move in, move in and hits the apical membrane from the inside. They need to cross this membrane to reach the colloid. This is accomplished by another membrane protein called penderin. The iodide ion thus reaches the colloid. The iodide ion now needs to be oxidized to iodine before it can iodinate tyrosine residues. So, near the apical surface of the membrane in the colloid there is an enzyme called thyroid peroxidase or TPO which oxidizes iodide ion into iodine. This process is called oxidation. The iodine molecule then combines with tyrosine residues in the thyroglobulin to form either monoiodotyrosine or MIT or diiodotyrosine DIT. This process is called iodination. What happens next in the thyroglobulin molecule is that DIT either combines with MIT to form T3 or DIT combines with another DIT to form T4. This step is called coupling or condensation. T3 and T4 have now been formed and they now need to be released into the bloodstream. For this, they need to be extracted or lysed through the thyroglobulin. This is achieved by 
resorption where the colloid is taken up from the apical surface into the follicular epithelial cell. Then proteolysis takes place in the lysosomes where it releases MIT, DIT, T3 and T4. MIT and DIT are metabolized. Iodide liberated is recycled back to again iodinate tyrosine in the thyroglobulin. T3 and T4 process the basolateral membrane and are released into the bloodstream. We have discussed that T3 is a major active form of the hormone even though T4 is the major hormone released from the gland. Therefore, T4 when it reaches the peripheral tissues, it is deiodinated to form the more active hormone T3. Now let us look at various antithyroid drugs acting at one or the other steps in thyroid hormone synthesis. The first one is ions such as thiocyanate and perchlorate. They inhibit the process of iodide uptake. Then there are thyroid synthesis inhibitors such as propyl thiouracil and carbimazole or methimazole which inhibit the enzyme thyroid peroxidase or TPO. By inhibiting this enzyme, they inhibit the key steps in hormone synthesis such as oxidation, iodination and coupling OIC. Then there is a drug called iodides which inhibit the release of the hormone from the basolateral membrane. The hormone starts building up in the gland but is not able to be released. Therefore, iodides are also called thyroid constipating agents. Finally, we have propyl thiouracil but not carbimazole or methimazole beta blocker propranolol and antiarrhythmic drug amiodarone which inhibit the peripheral conversion of T4 into T3. Thanks for watching. If you found this video been beneficial, please like, share and subscribe among your colleagues and friends.